Hello and welcome to another episode of Citadel Guard Adventures. This is Verathan of the Citadel Guard of Gondor, and we're back in the Iron Hills. So on the last episode, we freed, I guess, the town of Otterby, and we were taking care of some grappling hooks here in Scalds Drop. But now, our next stop is the Dying Lake, which is this dwarven structure that you can see over there. Uh, it's a really cool place to be in, especially I think it looks better during the day. So I'm very glad we'll get a chance of going there and seeing it in daylight. It's a very impressive view. I mean, after Erebor, it's the, the next best thing you can get in terms of dwarven architecture. Well, I guess maybe you could, you could say Gundabad, of course, is the... Uh, Gundabad and Moria are the ones to go to. But I don't know, th th there's something so majestic about the Dying Lake that I... I'm always amazed by it. More than I am when I... When I go into Moria or... Or any other dwarven place. I mean, it's so unique. And, and, and we'll get to see that one in just a moment. But it always gets me thinking... How much time... Had the dwarves to work to make that happen and as i said it, it, it makes me wonder even more so than any other construction in moria or any other place i mean take a look at this and you can see yeah it's not finished yet or it's in some sort of a reparation maintenance something like that but come on it, it's a whole mountain I, I don't know what i get so impressed about it because, yeah, now that I come to think of it, eh, Moria and, and all the other dwarven places we've been to are bigger than this, but... I mean, I guess this goes to show how great of a job the, the world-building team did on this place. It's so fitting and, and, and so majestic and, and so everything you want. There's nothing like it. I still stand what I, with what I said. Th there's nothing like, like the Dying League. I, I love it. I mean, maybe it's just the fact. Oh my god, fall damage. Maybe it's just the fact that they also carved an axe out of the thing. So, in order for them to carve that axe, and and that hole in between the hand and and the body, the beard and the handle of the axe, all that was part of the mountain, so... They, they basically... brought down an entire mountain just for this, and it's so thoroughly worth it. I mean, it, it's also so hard to get a good picture of it. It's so big. If we go too far... Uh, it wouldn't, it, it would look a little small, but if we get too close then, it, it gets out of frame. Man, I think this is my favorite place of, of the entirety of the a dwarf, a dwarf holds, uh, quest pack. That... That encompasses the Iron Hills and the Grey Mountains. This is the best place. By far. Now I have no idea. I don't remember how to get there. Was just so in awe with what this is. But yeah, I, <laughs> I forgot I'm supposed to find a dwarf in here. I mean, you can see they're still working on it. So once again, this might be maintenance. We we will get an answer for that in just a moment, or this may very well be uh, a new construction in any case. It's so impressive in any... in any case that Truly. And it goes up and up. 
I'm in. Nayans, Agate, I. Oh, I am finally sent someone. It has been difficult to stay on schedule here. You would not believe what I and my workers have seen. Do tell, please. By my grandsire's beard. It is difficult to work and to stay on schedule here at the Dying League. Each day I hear reports from my workers that they feel as if they are being watched. Some even speak of shadowy thinking in the hills. I myself thought I saw something today. At the base of the axe, perhaps it would be as good a place as any to start. You must get to the bottom of this. So this is a good place to look out over the Dying Lake. Yeah, why not? An impressive place to be in, for sure. Let me take a the look then. Nothing seems out below. Perhaps a closer inspection of the Dying Lake base is in order. Yeah. It's never this simple, of course. Let us get down. Let's see what's going on exactly. This is a place. A shouted creature attacks from a small crevice at the base of the axe. A strange creature has been defeated. Alright. Back. Back to Risty up top. Just remember, yeah, we are 15 beasts away from the tier 1 deed in here. I'm not sure what rewards would that give us. Yes, uh, I don't see it. Ah, the advanced? Yeah. Doesn't give reputation, that's a shame. But, it, I mean, doesn't give virtue XP. It does give reputation, but it doesn't give virtue XP. But I would love to to complete that deed. That way we would only be missing a couple places for the explorer deeds. This is a really short area, really, as you have seen. It would only get you one or two levels at most, so you can be done with it relatively soon. Not gold or gems, but good grey steel. So there was something there. I knew that we were not going mad. You must tell nine of what you saw. How are we to complete the Dying League with this beast lurking in the rock? And it seems that's it. Deliver the glimmering fragments to carry in Yarnfast. Okay. Uh, anything else in here? Um, no, it doesn't seem to be. Can I get the black book? Yeah. So yeah, let us go back to Yarnfast. It's a really short place. I mean, even with with this rest XP and and even now that there is a VIP bonus event going, we are just about to hit level 117. That's something that you need to keep in mind for this a uh, level range from level 115 to level 120 if you don't have any sort of bonus xp gain rest xp uh xp event like this one some tomes or whatever you will struggle a bit 
especially in the Great Mountains, reaching a level 120 or even re reaching level 118. That's the level that you need to unlock some of the instances there. But I don't think we will have any issues there, thank God. But that happened to me the first time around. Ah, look at those. When you get to the other five sources, you are certain to come back with even more. You inform Caddy that the glimmering fragments you have collected were panned from all six sources. Oh, ah. Uh, you were gone for quite some time, weren't you? Ah, Rumor was right. Ruined as the minds of Yarnflast are, much more can be dealt from them, and with much less walking about. I am sorry to have sent you on such a fruitless errand, Barathan. Take this for your travels. Uh, once again, defensive. Yeah, these are all defensive ones. But who knows? Let us see if if we can use them still. I mean, technically, we will lose some some physical mastery, but maybe not too much, or maybe two. I mean, how much vitality do we gain? And how much physical mastery? Um, God, no, I lost it. Okay. Yeah, I think it, it warrants the exchange. I mean, Louis Seven did a, a video in which he explained the, the math you need to keep in mind when doing this kind of gear uh, upgrades. And uh, But to be honest with you, I, I, I don't remember uh, what was the math exactly. So I'm just going with a very surface level impression of it. But if you have the time, uh, do check that out. Hopefully by the time this video is uploaded, a Louis 7 one will still be relevant uh, because, well, I found it helpful even though I don't remember that one that much. High time the dust settled and dwarves got back to work. You have returned, and I see the look upon your face as one that carries dire news. Shadowy nameless things lurking in the Iron Hills. What could have caused this? We must count the mining entrances in Yarnfast immediately. Okay. I guess we can do that before advancing the black book, just because I do want to uh, finish this, advance this as much as I can before we leave the Iron Hills. Once again, we will not be able, I think, to do this right now. Uh, we cannot solo this in our current state. We would need to get a group, and whichever group we get, they will most likely need to have some light of that end beyond the passive the passive skills shuriken sounds around you as a nameless beast leaps over the palisade the shuriken ceases the southern mine entrance Then which one was this? Is this the northern one then? So if that's the case, that doesn't make any sense to me. What's the other mine entrance? I think that's when I initially fell through that hole. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna take a quick look for it, but as I was saying, even if you go with a group, your group will most likely need to get some form of light of that end deal. Uh, you get 80 light as, as a passive bonus when you are level 120 or more. But the instance that we're about to unlock requires you to have... I don't remember how much, 150, 200 light of that end deal. So, yeah, even if you get a group, you need to... Ah! 
Even if you get a group, you need to get Light of Arendil as well. There is no way around it. No, that was not it. So... So... This is the Eastern one then. Nothing seems to miss as, as workers continue their efforts to clear debris. Okay, that makes sense, of course. Since I didn't see any interactable object, I didn't check it, but it makes sense. Eastern side, southern side. Silly mistake. Back on our track. Now. One moment of my time, then off with you. It would seem the mines are no longer safe. I will call back all dwarves at once. I knew this day would come, though a part of me did not want to believe it. Brokush me now. Well? Rokush Minam, the Howling Pit. Three doors protect the arm fast from Rokush Minam. Only one door remains locked and sealed. I have checked and the seal to that final door has not broken. There must be something wrong with Grar's seal. The brave dwarf Grar sacrificed himself to collapse the opening to the Howling Pit. The seal of Grar has remained intact ever since, covering the pit. There are only two ways to open the final door. One is to break the seal, and doing so would most certainly lead to our doom. The second is to retrieve Grar's key. Yes, the doors can be opened with a secret key, stored for safekeeping within Erebor. Take this red with you. It will explain the urgency to this matter to anyone who may find it out of your actions. Seek out the scholars abode of Masalu Ukshar. The key remains hidden within. Hurry, Vryathan. Time is of most importance. So we need to go back to Erebor, and after that, I don't think we'll be coming back to the Iron Hills for a long while. But basically, we listened to part of this story with the lost lore of the dwarves that we just collected. Uh, but there are three doors as... The book said, and as Nain said as well, this is the first one, this is the second one, and this is the third one. Uh, we need to get the key. Uh, this is a seal made of mithril, if you would remember. And this would lead to a pit where nameless beings will constantly emerge. You need to survive 10 rounds. Or was it 20? I think it was 20. You need to survive 20 rounds of those guys. And each round will increase the Shadow of Mordor by 10 so that's why you need 200 shadow of more a light of arendil if you want to fully counteract it or you need at least to have some light of arendil so you are not as hindered in it and the fights can get crazy even at level 130 i was not able to solo that stuff when i when i tried uh at level 130 i still needed to get a group i don't know if maybe at level 140 you can have better luck with it, so I'm willing to give that a try. But hey, that will take a while. And you need to complete this quest because you will get an item if you survive all 20 rounds. And you will need that item if you want to finish the second part of the Secret Stone questline. I already have uh, the first part here in my uh, quest tracker. I haven't done that one yet. I will do so at at other time but if you wanna see the end of that story you need to complete this plus many other things it's crazy what you need to do in order to to see the end of that one of that story but i think that one can wait for the time being now that we're here we can talk to nain and continue the black book of mordor we need to take dude into erebor we have done a great deal to hinder the efforts of the jango man uncle nain yeah, and your uncle also did a, a great deal of work himself as well. It is time for my nephew to learn what it takes to lead. Durin told me of the work you two did near Otterby and Skull's Drop, and I must commend you for it. I do not think the Yangovar will long remain in the Iron Fall to trouble us. Part of me wishes my nephew would remain here to assist me with finishing the job. As Lord of the Iron Hills, I command much respect and bear a great deal of responsibility for maintaining their peace. But my brother Thorin outranks me in age and in authority. He calls for his son, and I will not stand in the way. It is time for my nephew to learn what it takes to lead, and to grow into the greatness of his name. Was it not for that very purpose that his father named him Durin? I hate 
hate when he talks like this. I love my uncle, but not a day goes by without him telling me that I must be doing the deathless come again. Can't you imagine it? It is quite frustrating. It is not an uncommon name among my people, and no one forbid my father from naming me thus. It is not fair to compare me to such a measure. It would not be fair to anyone. Yeah, you start you start to see the amount of a pressure up on Durin's shoulders with this. I understand another dwarf is to be traveling with us. I am ready to return to the Lonely Mountain with you, Barathan. I understand there is to be another dwarf traveling with us. Yes, out the gem cutter. Where is he to be found? The question throw. You are welcome to go there and retrieve him, Fred. I have spent more than enough time within those walls and do not desire to spend any more. Now my thirds can only be quenched by battle and glory, and that lies beyond Yarnfast. I will meet up with you after you have found out thee. Alrighty. There we go. Back to the tavern. We we've seen Althi there a couple times already. Ah, but now Kiel is with him. <laughs> Oh, Verithon, my friend, I have discovered something most unusual. Have you come to save me, Verithon? I simply wanted to drink in peace, but Kiel has come here and will not stop bothering me. Will you help him with whatever nonsense he is chattering about? I have been cleaning out my father's house, Verithon and I. Well, I, I found something unusual. I have no friends here in Yarnfast save for you, so there is nowhere else for me to turn. Will you come help me make sense of this? Please, tell me you will. Of course. Of course, Skill. What are friends for? I mean... We may not have had the best of starts. Uh, with all your tales and what you said about Althys family, but... I come to like you. You are a really fun dwarf to hang around. So, let us go. What do you need? You'll come. You'll come see. Good, good. I really appreciate this, my friend. Forgive the mess, my friend. I had only been cleaning for a short time when I found... Well... You will see. I have not been back here for many years. My father ran it and I had a falling out and he told me never to return. He died some time after that, neither of us having apologized, and I could not bring myself to come back. But when I did live in this house, I never knew of anything like this. This way, Brethren, this way. Yeah, lead away. Yeah, yeah. Up here. Do you see it? There is a door here, Brethren. I moved the desk to clean behind it, and that's when I saw the seam in the wall. You can see it, right? I am not going mad. Why would my father Brandon need a secret door inside his house? What could lie within this hidden chamber? Brr, I have given myself a chill, very often. Well, I myself have told tales of doors just like this. They can always be opened. I beg you to help me search for a way to open this one, my friend. The secret to opening this door must be somewhere within the house. Yeah, we can see the, the, the seaming here, the opening. Ah, and you can even get a glimpse of it. That's, that's so cool. I had never tried this before. But the fact that you can even... Oh my god, that's amazing. So, okay, we, we need to find a way to open this. You inspect the desk kill moved away from the wall and not, not the scripts on the floor caused by the movement. The drawer contains nothing of interest. And although you search beneath and behind the heavy stone of the desk, you find no apparatus that might connect it to the secret door. The desk does not appear to be involved with opening the door and served only to keep its location a secret from idle eyes. Oh, it's not a desk. 
There are four tables in here, so I guess we'll need to check them all. You reach under the corner of the table and disturb an insect that flies away, buzzing angrily. You doubt the insect knows anything about the secret door, so you let it escape. You reach under the corner of the table and find only dust. Even so, it does not dissuade you from your search and you only relent when you are certain this corner of the table holds no secrets. Yeah, I'm also here to find it, girly. Help me out in here. You reach under this corner of the table and find it covered in a film of ancient dust. The dirt smears and you wipe it off on your clothes. You reach under this corner of the table and feel a series of small scratches that merit closer inspection. You study the scratches and discover a crude picture of what seems to be a bed, with a line emanating from its very center. I guess that's our first clue. Thinking the ore filled barrow might contain a hidden lever or other mechanism, you search it closely but find nothing out of the ordinary. It rolls on its front wheel and it's not rooted to the floor as you might have expected. At last you dig around in the contents of the barrow, but your search reveals nothing suspicious. Any other clues? The grain in these sacks has long since rotted. The sacks themselves hide nothing of note. Behind the crates you find that a young kill scratched his name in the wall, but nothing useful. The bed is too heavy to move. You search all around its sides and back, but find only cobwebs and dust, and nothing suspicious. What about this chest? The chest is locked and you can find no way to open it. Ah, there's another bed in here. You cannot move the heavy stone of the bed by yourself, but you inspect its sides and back for hidden sigils or devices and find none. Reaching under the mattress, you disturb only dust and long dead insects. The metal banded chest contains only rags and moth eating clothes. This chest contains all clothes that likely once belonged to Kiel's mother. So it's not this one. Anything in here? The stone bench is heavy, but you study it closely and find nothing unusual. This table bears the scuff marks of heavy use, but nothing of use to you now. Is this up? Uh, no, but we cannot go down these stairs. So, the first floor, and I seem to remember there was, yeah, this bed. You stretch your arm beneath the mattress and find nothing unusual within reach. Oh, come on, what do you mean? It's not this one. So what? It is impossible to tell exactly when this illustration might have been painted. An armored dwarf commands his warriors to assault a forest encampment of orcs against a black dwarf of flames. Is this a painting of Mirkwood or other woods entirely? You feel around the edges of the frame and behind the painting for a hidden lever or other device, but find nothing. Oh my god, so what the? You search among the crates but find nothing of note. These crates contain assorted home goods and you find nothing suspicious among them. Huh. Alright, so. Do we need to check this one again? You search under the corner of the table and find only dust. This corner of the table holds no secrets. Which one talked about the bed? You study the scratches and discover a crude picture of what seems to be a bed with a line emanating from its very center. Does that mean that I need to... Come on, why not? 
One of these bits has to be. Right? I, I, I'm under the impression that I'm missing one bit around this house that might hold the secret to this. Because other than that, these crates, but there was nothing in these crates, was it? Broken pieces of wood and metal and nothing of use. Yeah, every time I, I do this, I always forget what am I supposed to do. Searching, searching further, you find a hidden lever which you pull. There is a snap elsewhere in the house. Thank you, so you needed to interact with that bed twice. Trying to distract you there. Okay. And... You are disappointed to see that the hidden door remains closed. I heard a loud click, but the door is still closed. What changed, I wonder? What's that? You found a secret lever hidden in one of the beds. This is preposterous, Berathan. What secrets did my father keep in his house? And did my mother know about them? No, I cannot believe that dear Sema knew anything about secret levers and chambers and hidden doors. I heard a loud snap earlier. It must have been when you pulled the secret lever. Something must have changed. But what? The chest is opened. Great. This chest used to be locked, but now it stands open and reveals its contents. Glittering gold and shining gemstones. The riches are impressive, but you are not here for the fortunes of Kiel's forebears. Instead, you reach into the treasure and feel around the edges until you find a small recess on the inside of the chest. You press the indentation and hear Kill give a whoop of triumph from the other room. Perathan, something is happening! Get out here! Ah! Oh. Take a look at these ruins, Perathan. What do they say? My father, Branit, always thought I should pay more attention to my learning. Was it because of this? Ah, uh, how could it be? He died before telling me anything about the secret door, and I was no longer welcoming his house. But I think I can read these ruins. I think these runes say... Speak the name of he who carved me. Well, here I go, Veriathan. Run it! Mm -hmm. Run it! Run it! Verithan, it's not working. What's that? You think my father might not have made this door? It is true that others of my family lived here before Branit. Perhaps my grandfather is responsible for it? My grandfather, Belik! No? My great grandfather? Stator! This is useless, Beriathan. You don't think this chamber is even older than my great-grandfather, do you? What was my twice great-grandfather's name? I barely remember it. Ah, yes. Tasco. It is hopeless. You cannot be serious, Beriathan. Fine. My thrice great grandfather name was. It was. Boyd? I don't believe it. Yeah, you better believe it. It's opened. And here we go. Take a look at this. Uh. Kill. Gonna be checking this. 
just a moment. I am pleased we managed to open the door, but I tremble to think what may lie beyond it. And why should the name of my twice great grandfather prove the secret to its opening? My family is long lived, but Boyne died almost a thousand years ago, if I remember the lineage all right. His name is rarely spoken in my family, and were I not a teller of tales with an ironclad memory, I might not have remembered it at all. Why did Boyne delve this hidden chamber? What terrible secrets might lie within? We have no choice, Beryathan, let's go! Stay close, Baratheon. I do not like this. Boy, what did you do? These runes. There is a book here. It is bound in black leather. This is Sauron's symbol. This book is from the land of Mordor. Alright, we need to talk to Gil, but first, first, let us take a couple pictures in here. This is a really cool chamber, if you ask me. So I'm obviously gonna take the chance of getting some memories of it, because why not? Oh my god, I love this. Even closer? Yeah, why not? Let us go even closer. Yes. Did Point write in this book? Many of the pages are blank, but the writing within seems to be of many different languages. One of them seems to be in the Shellroca mode. But what would my thrice great grandfather have to do with artifacts of Mordor? I do not like this, Bryathan. We must tell Lord Nine about this. We have no choice. Yeah, I'm glad I, I took the pictures before this encounter was closed. I mean, you can still, as you see here, uh, hang around the hidden chamber, and now there are lots of dwarves to go with it. Plus, the book is closed. Come here, Garly. Trying to get a good picture of this book. And maybe even the dwarves that are contemplating this. Because, yeah, this is Sauron's symbol. So there is a great mystery in here. God, I love the light reflections on my helmet right now. So. Let us see. For how long has this chamber remained hidden beneath our very noses? What does this mean, Beryathan? For how long has this chamber remained hidden right beneath our very noses? I do not like secrets in my city, Beryathan. Especially when those secrets come from the land of Mordor. What evils might have been worked within these walls? My people have had a friendly relationship with the Shelroca for thousands of years, Beryathan. When our holes were cracked and damaged in the devastation that followed the fall of Tangorodrim, it is recorded that, sh that the Shelroca stayed for a time in the Iron Hills and participated in the Great Mending. Most of that people went on to Gundavad, though they never arrived and their fate is shrouded in mystery. Over the centuries since, small families of Sheldroka came to live in the Iron Fault and here in Yarnfast, and rarely caused trouble. But look at this chamber, Beryathan. What evils might have been worked within its walls? What foul sorcery was recorded within that book? The sigil on its cover is known to me. Indeed, it is known to all of Durin's folk. The Eye of Sauron, feared and despised. Did Kiel's forebears worship Sauron at the height of his powers? Do the Sheldroka worship him still, even following his defeat? Were you privy to this knowledge, Kiel? What have you to say for yourself, villain? This book cannot remain in Yarnfast. I will not allow it. It must be taken from the Iron Hills. It remained hidden near my people for too long, and now that I know of its presence, I will no longer tolerate it. Take it to your wizard friend, Beryathan. 
take it to Gandalf and let him decide what to do about the evil thing. Do you think my father knew of this room? He cannot have. Lord Nain may not believe me, but you must, Beryathan. Don't you? I swear to you, I had no knowledge of either Chamber of Tome. My thrice great grandfather Voin lived more than a thousand years ago, and of his line I knew only my father Branit. Each of the others were names only, names in a family tree I did not see to or the need to study. Do you think my father knew of this room? He cannot have. Certainly my mother Sema would not have permitted such an artifact as that tome of Mordor to remain within her walls, so near to her child. It is preposterous, Baryathan. And what of these runes? I have not studied the language of my people in many years, and the words are quite difficult for me to read. I think they might speak of Thapargathel, the lost great citadel sought by both Sheldrick and Longbeard alike, but I cannot say for certain. That is not an evil place, though it be shrouded in mystery. The book, however, I cannot explain. What would Voin have to do with the artifacts of Mordor? I like it no more than Lord Nain, Beryathan. Pick up the book and carry it to Gandalf with my approval. Present it to him for study, and if he determines that it poses no danger, I ask that you return it to me. Unpleasant as it seems, this tomb is an artifact of my house, and I would not have it lost unless the wizard confirms that it wholly be wholly evil. Even so, I would want to have some form of compensation in that case. The book is more than a thousand years old, and of great historical interest for my people and for me personally. Alright, pick up the Black Book of Mordor from the table where it lies. Yeah. Couple pictures of the Black Book. And here we go. The black leather binding feels cool to the touch. For this chamber to remain undiscovered for so long fills me with amazement. But I do not fear the room or its contents. The black bound book has some connection to Sauron. What is that to me? Sauron is defeated and can travel us no more. Any dread I would feel at the mention of his name or his works has gone and cannot stir my heart to worry. Long did I nurse the resentment of being left behind while my uncle fought in the war, but now we are to return to the lonely mountain, and I find a spring in my step that was not there before. I aim to prove myself to my people and to the world, and the memory of Sauron cannot diminish my eagerness. Let us set forth, Beryathan. Let us go to Waterby and admire our handiwork there before we continue on to the lonely mountain and King Thorin. You can deliver the Black Book to Gandalf while I speak with my father. Okay, so yes, we are leaving. How, how cool is this that this room does not appear in the minimap? I mean, such a cool detail. But more importantly, I want to talk about what we just discovered, the Black Book of Mordor, which is what gives the name to the quote-unquote epic right now. After you finish Volume 4 and you venture into the Dark Land, you begin the... A Black Book of Mordor storyline. And at first, I, and I'm sure many other players, uh, thought it was just a wordplay. We have been doing books for the epic for so long that it made sense for the epic in Mordor to be called the Black Book of Mordor. That's where we were. So I, at the very least, was very surprised when I found out the Black Book of Mordor was an actual physical thing to be found in the game and that this is what's been uh, driving the narrative all along without us knowing. And we? We don't know yet what the Black Book does. At least Beryathan doesn't. But it's been driving the narrative ever since we stepped into Mordor and it will uh, all come... It, it will all make sense in the end but at this point the first time you do this is a total mystery and I, I also thought it was very strange how the black book was introduced at the end of book se chapter 7 and the beginning of chapter 8 considering the black book of Mordor has 14 chapters that means we are basically halfway through the story and only now we are finding this artifact and only now will we start to discover how important it is. It was a, a daring move 
on the developer's part, if you ask me, to, to have this twist this late in the story and introduce such a key element this late in the story, I, I, I did not see it coming. But this, I think, is the moment in which the Black Book of Mordor storyline really starts to pick up. Uh, its conclusion is really something else entirely. It's it's one of the best things the Lotro team has ever done. And after you have heard me tell praise of Volume 1, Volume 3 and Volume 4, you know, this 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 means something. Uh, the 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 only part of the main story I'm still kind of indifferent to is Volume Two. Uh, and uh, and I think I know why, but I I will tell you my thoughts, my new thoughts on Volume Two when we reach the end of Gundavad, because those two kind of tie in together quite nicely in my opinion so we're gonna put a pin on that for the moment and we're gonna focus on the black book of mordor but i did want to mention how odd it is the first time you do it is to find this artifact at this point in the story how intriguing it is and how satisfying it also is when you start getting all the answers until you reach the end point of it it's its scope the scope of, of the story here in the Black Book, I think, is it's the greatest scope of all the epics that we have done. It, it, it covers so much, so much more even than the other ones, in a way. But I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I want to save some of those surprises for the time when we actually reach them in game we're gonna leave it in here just try to to remember today's episode because all i have said during the last few minutes is important and will come into play later but for the time being we just need to to meet Turin. here there he is Durin wears a thoughtful expression as he gazes off to the west you okay a large party has taken this road westward. Easterlings? Did you see? The young of our surrounding Utterby remain in disarray, like as not the result of our efforts there. And Danes, too. But that is not what has drawn my attention, Beryathan. A large party has taken this road westward. I spy dust on the horizon, kicked up from the road as they passed. Could it be the Easterlings that attempt another attack on the Lonely Mountain? Let us follow them and ensure they do not. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead if you don't mind. I have the horse, I'm a little bit faster. And we gotta discover who exactly is waiting ahead of us. So I'll meet you there, I guess. Yeah, it's basically on the boundary between the Iron Hills and the Dayland, so... We're going back now, basically. This was the end of our time in the Iron Hills. Once again, a very short area. Not a lot of quests, not a lot of places to visit. Really short Slayer deeds, in fact. And that reminds me, I should really uh, take the time to finish the the advanced tier of the, of the Beast Slayer deed. There's just 15 of them to defeat, but I do want that reward. So let us hope that we can find another 14 enemies along the way, because I would love to complete this. We might be able to do that. Come on. The heal beast didn't didn't stun me and then some links. 
Lynxes are gonna do that? No way. Oh. And one of them applied a disease. And a power debuff. Oh, come on. Who? Who applied that nasty debuff on me? More importantly, how many am I missing? Nine of them. Okay. Well, at least I feel a little better if I'm getting the stun from a kill beast and not one of these. Once again, missing four. All right, this should be quick. Three. Two. Oh, come on. One. Jeez. Zero, there we go. Beast Slayer advanced. Um, this one. Some marks, some runes, some reputation. Uh, five Lotro points, always good to have. Some heighten here, the runes. Some trophies that we can sell or maybe save for tasks later. But what do we have in here? Resolution damage. Uh, no, I don't think I'm going to keep that one. Uh, enhancement runes. And more enhancement runes. Going to check that in just a moment. What do we have in here? Uh, No, I don't think I'm going to change my boots. I'm going to just deconstruct these ones. Uh, okay, let's leave it like that. These gems I don't need. Alright, so now we can continue our our uh, journey west and we'll see where we end up. still maybe I should have used the horse again but we're basically there right now We go. The party during witness from afar reveals itself to be a large band of Shelruka. Why are these Shelruka here? We'll find out soon enough. And for what purpose? I am Botus Frostblood, leader of this Shelruka band. You are with this long beards, man? I am Botus Frostblood, leader of this Shelruka band. I hope you have answers for me, for my patience is nearly spent. It has been days since my axe has drawn blood, and she is thirsty. Tell me what transpires in Edivor, and tell me quickly. You came from the east and not the west. Ah, 
We have been waiting here for our messenger to return. A dwarf of good speed and loyal temperament, but he is ours overdue. He was to speak with the king under the mountain and obtain permission for us to cross the daylands on our way to the Grey Mountains. Why has he not returned? Why has he not sent word? I smell treachery, man. Has King Thorin imprisoned him? This insult cannot stand. We will wait for a little while longer, but my Shelroka will not wait long. We sent word to the king as a matter of courtesy, but I begin to question whether such courtesy was deserved. No one, not even a king, can get away with insulting Botus Frostblood. Perhaps I and my Shelroka will force our way through the daylands to our promised lands among the Grey Mountains and speed upon Thorin's permission. These Shelroka are growing impatient, and I fear what might happen if they seek to force their way across the daylands if it comes to violence. I will remain here without Iberiathan, and we will do our best to calm them. You hurry on to the Lonely Mountain and tell my father that Botus Frostblood and his band grow tired of waiting. Perhaps the king has got a good reason for keeping the Shelroka messenger from returning? Go, Iberiathan, and with haste. I fear the Shelroka will not wait much longer, and the situation here will get worse if it is not resolved quickly. All right, so there you have it. Uh, we need to go to King Thorin, but we also need to break Tuchel's message to the Queen in Dale, and we have already run out of time for today. So join me next time, and we'll continue our journey west. For the time being, this has been all on today's episode of Seed Edelgard Adventures. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you on the next one. Until then, my friends, stay safe, take care, good luck to you all, and I will see you later.